she is and how she presents herself is so much about like bewitching people. And I just, I love watching that, you know? I love watching her work and the power. When I see her paintings and all her things, I'm so surprised, where is that coming from? I'm sort of speechless. And why are you doing it? Why are you telling this story? Yeah. Why it's come out? I will be super scared. So you used to saying Michelle and she asked me to. When we started uh, working together, because she got sick of me screaming in the middle of the restaurant, Mommy! You know, my parents never, never gave me any limits. My father was making kind of erotic films and I, you know, I was watching them at age five, you know, and if I showed them to my friends, they all run home and like <laughs> crying to their parents and I'm just like, what's wrong? Like, I don't get it. Both of my parents were in LA. I don't think Michelle came once to visit me when I was living in France. I was not really there and mm -hmm. we are not like a typical family in a certain way. We were not under the same roof for a long time. Yeah, it's not fight, but like friction. Last year I said, you know, you try to be close. And I say it seems that we are good to each other. So why not embracing it? Having a mother-daughter relationship with my mom was not always so easy. She doesn't like, she's more interested in us being partners or friends. That's really how we function now. And at first I was a little resistant to that. I was like, oh, but I need a mom, I want a mom, you know. And then I just realized, you know, I just gotta let that go. This is the relationship I can have with her. That's what I should cherish. I guess we have very different ways of looking at the world. And, you know, I'm obviously much more in this kind of like spiritual sort of thing. And maybe she's a little bit more of a rationalist philosophy. I went all over the world. I changed life, I started this, I did something else. With instinct, I follow a flow of attraction and try to make a living out of it. And I'm still unable to analyze why I went from law school to be doing striptease, not at the crazy horse. We are doing this in Little Fair with some transvestite women. It was mm -hmm. like a war that was very interesting. I did law school. I became a criminal attorney for a little bit. But you know, it's something very useful. Everybody should do it. But at the same time, for two years, Gilles Deleuze was giving class there. I follow that and, and you know, I'm totally Deleuzean even after this. So that was very important. For some reason, somebody thought it was clever to give me sex cases to embarrass me. I mean, you know, I was 21, I was very innocent of the world, I was pretty fascinated. I was spending a lot of time in jail talking with those guys. And then moving to New York, moving to LA, following some things that I, I cannot explain why. It was just because of a, a song or a book or thinking it was the right time. What is in the family is that we eat well. To me, like traveling and you need a chef and a DJ, and then you are fine. Okay. <laughs> I knew I wanted to move to the state, and my brother told me, oh, you should go to LA because it's New York on the Riviera. I love New York, I love the Riviera, I went there. <laughs> like I thought, yeah, like everything is possible. The first week I was there, I, I got two tickets, one for jaywalking, the other one because I did not have a bra on the beach. They were both $75 each. I was like, wow. <laughs> that was in 79. Yeah. But you know, in LA, it's so much fun. And then people are having one day, I cannot eat carrots anymore. You are going to poison me with those carrots. There's yeah. uh, carrots in there. Meantime, like drinking five vodka martini. <laughs> Sugar, please. <laughs> right. But it's what I love about LA. Everybody with their own rules. She taught me a lot of things, but out of but not saying them. 
by not actually talking about them. Just yeah. by me obs observing and being around her and watching her work. For Michelle, all that is so intrinsic yes. into who she is. So in a way, I don't have a language to talk about it either. Thank you, now I realize that Rick was the first one to ask you to do a mural because he loves what you do, but he thinks you are talking too much. So in the mural, you say it all. So I say it all, exactly. Yeah. Because I have yeah. made narrative. And I guess when I'm doing a little painting, it's hard for, the, you know, you just see like a little frame of the story. I make collages. And then I try to figure out what the flow, and then I choose certain lines that I'm going to use. And then I try to, to choreograph it. Americans love to talk about fighting for peace. That doesn't make any sense. You can't fight for peace. You either peaceful or you have peace or you be peaceful. I mean, about Michelle Stahl, I think I just love the, this amazing, like, eccentric witch, like, aura she gives off. You know, she's changed a lot. But before it was, you know, sort of baggy and colorful. And then when so she got with Rick and then she started, he started making clothes, it all of a sudden got much more sort of elegant, sort of gauze, sort of rough around the edges, you know. And I guess I sort of, you know, adopted that too, except for now I'm actually more into color. So I'm, you know, the, I'm like the only one who orders like Rick's stuff in color. The tattoo on my fingers, they are a version of what could be some Berber artwork. I always look at it. I would never have a tattoo like somewhere I cannot look at. It's a combination of a lot of uh, rings from friends. Oh, the main beautiful. thing is there to go with the tattoo. I'm always wearing them. Yes, some days the combination is right. Some days the working process. I'm doing this with a crayon, but. I, I'm getting up and it's the first thing I do. My head does not function. Really <laughs> like this kind of. You know, she always used to say, you know, even you know, during the day, you have to be dressed like you're going to a cocktail party. It's hard for me to always be dressed up. It's not necessarily so much about people looking at me, but about the work that I'm making. I don't, I don't want to ruin this dress. I don't want to paint in it. I'm playing with my teeth. What inspired the gold? It's always something practical, you know. The time when all of a sudden it was like, my God, what did we put in our feelings? Uh, you have to change it. And I had found in LA some kind of a new age dentist that was all about taking the feeling and putting gold. He put little diamonds in it to bring the light to you or whatever. So I did this thing for the feelings. And then I said, shit, I guess man, all this money and all these good vibes in those teeth there we don't see. So I was in the gold, I wanted more gold. So I start, <laughs> I starting in the front with one. Then I say I smoke a lot, so then they are always gold. I'm not going to have those white. No, Snoop Dogg is my idol. I don't know, in all those years, I think it's just always right, style-wise. And I like his attitude. It's part of the life and uh, doing it uh, the right way. This one was out of this world. We cannot yeah. call it a fashion show in a way. This was an intense moment of joy that uh, make you feel like you belong to the world and this world is bigger than the little world of fashion shows. Rick designed furniture and I take it from there and I make it up and it's falling in love both sides because I'm falling in love with the artisan. A love story with a lot of shaking and <laughs> that's not violent. We are going now to our stone cut marble guy and one of those artisans in Paris. We are doing a bench. That is one head of the bench. Oh. That is the second head of the oh bench. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And yeah. then there is the plaque that is not finished. So that goes 
really inside. So it's black marble. With Rick, we only work with black and white marble with no vein. But of course, they are the most difficult to find. It's super complicated to make. And it looks like you found it in the ground. Rick had a, an amazing eye. For the furniture, he gave me like little drawings like this. And after, I have to go. So it's something where I feel very creative also. It's working with people, finding material. I love the process of stuff. This is my life. That's The things that I love. So then Michelle was like, as she likes to, you know, direct and push and bring people together. She's like, Scarlett, you should, you know, you've been talking about the sculpture, you should make the sculpture. So the idea came from this idea of uh, the lost feminine, but also like the fertility goddess. But then what does that mean today? Like that fertility goddess was like, I just can't, I can't give anymore. I'm going to, I have to consume. So her, the passage where she, where life comes from is now this mouth. And we moved to this very masculine dominated culture, which is destroy the planet. The earth and we as a humanity, the family that we are, need the balance with the, with the mom or with the fem feminine. Because without that, there is no cycle of life. We forgot that we are part of an organism and that we have to respect that. I mean, I think the earth is so extremely beautiful. I have the feeling that uh, I've perhaps a good sense of not trying to do or see what I don't like. I like to see there is like nothing here, what can we do? You know, it's like mm -hmm. when I did Les Deux Cafés, that was a parking lot. So for me, that's the joy. There is a parking mm -hmm. lot. You ask people, can I do something on it? And then what do we do? We do a garden and the garden is coming. Oh, Michelle is, you know, she's very strong and she's a very positive person. And whenever I get a little emotional, she's always, she's like, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that way. You're being silly. You know, this is the solution. Just do that, you know, and very business-like about uh, feelings. It's not that she's not feeling them, she has them. She's not going to let her mind focus on them. Maybe I'm more like an emotional warrior, where I'm like, well, I'm going to walk right into this pain right now, and I'm going to feel it. It's scary what she does, in a way. It's something that you need to be strong or totally oh in conscience. And having like the freedom to to say, oh, I'm just doing this because I have fun doing it, but at the same time you have to make a living or thing like you have to justify yourself. That's the reason why Michelle is not fully an artist. She doesn't want to go and sit in her pain. And she doesn't want to suffer. She doesn't want to be vulnerable. It's something that does not come to my head to say, oh, I should have been doing this. So I always think there is was a reason and it's nice. Yeah, you have a good nature. I always find something beautiful. She doesn't reinvent herself, but you know, she's done so many different things. She didn't let anything get her down or stop her from just moving on with life. To me, that's really inspiring. She has such a powerful vision. I actually, I, do, I did take a bit of it because when I started making art again, like every time I was getting rejections. So it was some days I wasn't feeling so good. And I was like, but I kept getting up and showing up and just keep doing it. She's, and she's great to have around because she'll come in, you know, when I was doing the mural, and she's like, you know, maybe you need a little bit of this in there, you know. And we're like, you know, you're right. After all those years of life, I think this is uh, seeing something that's so amazing. Mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. With people and thinking, and, and for some reason, and some of them, I feel they need me to push it. This friend of ours wrote about it, she says, you know, Michelle sparkles, but then Scarlet shines. 